Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to House of Restoration Remnant House, Witnesses of Yahuwah. And I just want to give blessings unto the saints of the Most High. I mean, and right now, you know, as y'all look at the title, the title is, is basically uh, talking about life and death. And that's because we, as, as the people of Yah, were called unto a marriage. And if you think about it, uh, if you look in Torah, uh, it's a certain way that a bill of divorcement is given uh, to the woman. And that's when the woman decides to, to go and, or the man, depending on who, who's doing it. But when they decide to go and and astray and, and, you know, commit adultery and do different things like that, you could give a bill of divorcement. So y'all kept his own word and he wrote a bill of divorcement. But what he did was he renewed the covenant, right? Because he wrote the Torah on our heart. So the old Torah, which which works uh, or shows us the works of the flesh that, that helps us to understand what our sin is and makes us conscious of our sin, right? He has given us a Torah of the spirit that when we are beginning to, to, to do things, in other words, when we begin to slip, and something that I often say to, to me and my wife talk about all the time is don't turn a slip into a fall. Matter of fact, that might just be the title. Don't turn a slip into a fall because it, you can get to the point, and 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 I'm talking. I talk to myself you know, a lot of times when I make these these uh do these videos or any message that I have, I'm speaking to myself first because. I have areas of my life that I'm constantly working on. And, and honestly, the last week, uh, I think it was the last week or the week before last when I was on vacation, I had a little, little, uh, a little slip there where, where certain uh, temptations was, was uh, trying to, to, to overtake me. And if I would have continued on into that and been enticed, because remember, the scripture said that we're enticed of our own lust, and we'll talk about that. Then, 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 it conceives sin. And then once sin is conceived, then comes forth death. And so therefore, we don't we don't want to be uh, children of the darkness. We want to be children of the light. And we want to be able to, to walk in the presence of Yah. So let's look at Romans real quick. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. He said, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the Torah, that know, know the ways of Yah, that, that understands and keeps his ways. How that the Torah has dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman which, was, which has a man is bound by the commandment to her man so long as he lives. But if the man be dead, she is loose from the commandment of her man. Right? Look at that. So then if while her man lives, she is married to another man, she shall be a woman that breaks wedlock. But if her man be dead, she is free from that commandment so that she is no breaker of wedlock, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to that commandment by the body of Mashiach, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto Yahuwah. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the commandment did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Right? Remember, a, tr a corrupt tree brings forth corrupt fruit. And a good tree brings forth what? Good fruit. So, so what, what is Paul telling us right there in verses 7, 1 through 5? He's telling us that that bill of divorcement that was wrote to those that decided to go that route and continue to, to mess in and commit adultery, he's talking about a spiritual thing, not a natural thing. See, this is a, a spiritual thing. Now, we we, we become, when you uh, fall into a, a relationship with somebody, right, you get to know them. And as you get to know them, you try to do whatever you can to please them, right? And it's the same way. With, with our relationship with Yah, we have to we have to do whatever we can to please Him, and why? Because ultimately it becomes His will because He's the master of the house, and we are the ones married to Mashiach. Through Mashiach, we are reunited to Yah. 
because of that. First, bill of divorcement. When when Gasharel did their sins and committed all their sins and did all the different things that they did against Yah, he wrote that bill of divorcement because look what it said right there. So then if while her man lived, this is verse 3 again in chapter 7 of Romans. So then if while her man lives, she be married to another man, she shall be a woman that breaks wedlock. And guess what? Yah is the what? Living Elohim. He's not dead. And even Mashiach that was dead was raised from the dead that we may have everlasting life. So therefore, when we fall into relationship with Yah, we should be bringing forth fruit. We should be birthing fruit, birthing uh, the, the gift of life, the gift of peace, the gift of long suffering, the gift of endurance, the gift of patience, right? Of forbearance. These are, are the things that should be birthing forth from us. That's the fruit that he's talking about down here in verse 5, in verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the commandment by the body of Mashiach that ye should be married to another. Who is he talking about? Now you're that you're not married to, to, to going out and committing adultery. You're married to Yah. And so when we find ourselves getting ready to slip, we have to be careful because guess what? That temptation could take us a long way from Yah. Though he did say he's married to the backslider, we have to be careful because if we allow ourselves to, to, to allow a slip to become a fall, it's hard sometimes to get up from that fall. Yeah, you fall and get back up, but sometimes it's hard, especially if you're trying to do it by yourself. That's why we as the brethren have to come together. We have to trust one another. We have to be able to 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 be able to to be able to depend and lean on one another. And and sometimes, listen, I confess uh to Yah the things that I done wrong, and I go to him. But you know who else I confess to? I go to my wife and I tell her, look, this is where I'm having an issue at. Because sometimes you have to have a brother and step in for you and begin to pray for you. What did I I just said? Somebody has to step in. On your behalf and be able to pray for you. I don't want to. Oh, I've been doing this for twenty years. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm high and I'm this and I'm that. No, no, because all have fallen short and come. All have fallen short and come. I can't say it right. All have sinned and come short to the glory of Yah. All have fallen short, right? And so, therefore, you can never say that you won't make no mistake. That you won't have no slip up, because they come. That's what happens in this life. But that's why Yahushua came, that he may give us life, peace, and more abundantly, we are able to live that life. But we have to be willing to stop and say, you know what? Mashiach sacrificed so much for me. You know, he sacrificed so much for me. Why can't I sacrifice my, my temptation? My lust. Because when he was tempted, he gave the word back. And so what I'm trying to tell you right now is when you begin to become tempted, you need to get in your word. You need to begin to call on y'all. Seek y'all more than ever. Because now you're going through a trial. Huh? Because let me show you something. What James says right here. Go to James chapter 1 verses 13 through 15. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. And I want you to see this. Look what he said. He said, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yah. For Yahuwah cannot be tempted with either, neither tempts he any man. But look at this, verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Do you see that? When he is drawn away of his own lust, when it's something that you desire, something that 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 you're focused on, and it's your will, not his will. And remember what Mashiach, let your will be done, not mine. And so sometimes we have to submit ourselves totally unto Yah. And it's, uh, it's hard when that, when that desire and that lust is raising up in you. It's hard. But you don't want to become a servant to sin. You want to continue to be the obedient servant. And y'all remember, he was obedient unto death. Yahushua Mashiach. 
He was obedient even unto death. And yet, here we are. We, we don't even live, live a, 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 a blink of an eye considered in y'all's in y'all's timeline. And it's hard for us to, to go year after year to, to control ourselves. But we that's why we talked last week about self-control, temperance. Huh? We have to be able to do this. Look what that look what verse 15 says. When then when lust has conceived, look what they say. It brings forth sin. So so now, let's look at it like this. You committed adultery with y'all. And that adultery is whatever your little pleasure is, whatever it is that you desire to do. That so say for instance, y'all, being being your your husband or, or your wife, however you want to look at it, whether you're a man or female, right? And you found that other little thing out there, that nice little thing that looks so nice, pretty and petite, and just showing you all little that nice things. And oh, I've been there. And telling you all the nice things. And, and listen, this might be. This might be something. It might be a drug. It might be a a, a a a a game. It might be a TV. You know, the TV. It might be a, a actual woman or a man. It might be a homosexual desire. It might it it might. Who knows what it is? But that lust is what you're cheating on God with. Whatever your desire that becomes more of doing His will, because His will should be your desire. But when you fall into that lust, look what it says. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. So now what is being birthed or what has conceived in the belly spiritually, right? And that spiritual belly, because remember, we are all born again. And, and, and when, we, when we give our life to Mashiach and when we're born again, we're given gifts. Now, look what happens here, because. You, 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 each, each, every time you mature, y'all presents to you something new, revelation, whatever it is, okay? But look what it says right here. Once again, in verse 15, then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. So now there's sin growing in that womb. That's that little leaven that, that messes up the whole lump, okay? So now there is sin that's growing in the womb, right? And look what it says. So as that sin begins to grow, so as your pregnancy go through a nine-month period, right? So if you just continue on and continue on and allow it to grow, it might not even make it through a nine-month period because what happens sometimes with pregnancy? There's miscarriages. What is a miscarriage? It's a death, right? And then sometimes the baby goes all the way through the whole nine months and is born what? A stillborn. You don't want to have a stillborn anointing. You want your anointing to be fresh and alive. And when you go forth, you want the miracles that he said will follow behind those that believe on him. The healing. Huh? The, 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 the being able to, 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 to raise the dead. Being able to, to, to pray and, and see something happen. But look what it says. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. You don't want to have a stillborn. You don't want to have a miscarriage in the spirit. You want whatever you're birthing, you want it to be that good fruit that he talks about. You want it to be that, 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 what y'all admires, right? I want to I read to y'all just a little letter that I got from, from a guy. And, and I ain't going to say his name right out, but I, I want to read this letter to you. And I want you to see what this man said to me in this letter. All right. So it says, Dear Elder Smith, I'm writing to you because I have had issues in my life. Now, you know me very well. You know that I'm a man of God and you know that I have lived my life wholeheartedly unto him. But just recently, I had a, a slip and it actually turned into a fall because I began to commit adultery with another man's wife. And as I committed adultery with another man's wife, I tried to make this 
man or this this woman sleep with her man so that they would think that this was was their child together. And upon doing that, the man wouldn't he 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 wouldn't have sex with his wife. So I didn't have no other alternative. Me and his me me in my mind, I felt like I had no other way out. So I ended up having the man murdered. Yes, I said murdered. And upon having that man murdered, I then, after the mourning period that his wife went through, took her and made her my wife. And the child that was born, the child that was born, that was conceived through adultery, well, I guess I'm being punished for my sin because he was, he was, and, and this is how he wrote it. it. It's like you could read him, read that he was crying. He said, he was taken in his sleep. Basically, the baby died. Could you please keep me in prayer? Because I'm struggling. I have struggled. With my, with my addiction, my lust. Thank you. Keep me in your prayers, sincerely, King David. <laughs> uh, I get at the David Wilson. I, I, I have to say, David Wilson did an awesome job on that. But I want y'all to read about that because King David had that issue. Let's read Second Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter eleven, verses one. Through five. And I want y'all to see this. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when the kings go forth to battle, that David and Joab, or Joab, and his servants with him, and all of Israel, or Yashariel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Yarushalayim. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the woman of Uriah, the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. Listen to this. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Now, I want y'all to look at this from, from the point of view of what James was saying. What James was saying. When you are enticed of your lust. He was enticed of his lust, right? And then what happened? Sin was conceived because adultery was committed, right? And so I want you to look at this whole situation as if this is you and the Father, right? And now you're choosing life or death because the wages of sin is what? Death, right? But the gift of Yah is eternal life. So you have to you have to make your choice and you have to choose this day whom you're going to serve, right? So now let's look at, and y'all know the story. So Uriah come home and as Uriah come home, they would try to get him to sleep with him. With, with her, but she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. So basically, David wrote a letter to have Uriah killed in the field. So let's look at this, because now David is going to be uh, basically a judge for his own, his, his actions. But guess what? David ends up judging himself because of Yah's wisdom that he used through Natin Yah. Huh? So sometimes we are our own judges, right? Because Yah will use the Spirit to judge us. And if you're convicted through the Spirit, guess what? Then you will humble yourself. You will call on the name of Yah. You will begin to seek Him more than ever and fast and pray so that thing that's up in you, right, that's trying to cause that lust to rise up, you will submit yourself totally unto Him through fasting and prayer. Look what it says in uh, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. 
And Yahuwah sent Nathan unto El David and said, and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city and the, and the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a seed in many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little few lamb. Now, I don't know y'all seen Apostle uh, Peter Michael Martinez uh, video on the little few lamb, but I'm telling you, that was an awesome, uh, that was a very awesome video. It showed how uh, on the bummy lamb, basically, it showed how that lamb uh, mother forsaked it and it needed help being raised. So look at that little ooh lamb as it needs help being raised. So it said, but the poor man had nothing to say. One little ooh lamb, ooh lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drink of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd. So basically, he didn't want to take from his own flock or his own herd, so he took the other man's lamb. Look, look at that. To, and there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. He didn't want to give the other man none of his own, but he took the man's one little lamb that he had raised all that time. So basically, let's look at it like this. Lust came along, right, and took a child of Yah. Satan, through lust, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what brings forth death. And so this lamb... This lamb was was now in another man's uh, possession, and so we have to we have to understand when we allow ourselves to be enticed by our lust, we become, and if we fall because of that circumstance, we become a servant to sin again. And you should be an obedient servant unto who? Yahuwah. But look what it says here. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As Yahuwah lives, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Now, it's awesome because Nathan used, he used a metaphor with the lamb because David used to be a sheep herder. So a, a shepherd is a sheep herder. A shepherd does what? It cares for the lamb. It loves those lambs and raises them until they become sheep and then keeps them gathered together, right? So David, in, in, in his, his understanding of this, and if you understand, uh, uh, if you love something enough like your wife, you ain't going to go out there and do that which is, is unlawful, right? You're, you're not going to break your, your your vows that you made before her and Yah. But there are people that does that every day. And, and listen, once you begin to do it so much and become, after you're enticed, uh, you begin to do it so much. Listen, it becomes like a nonchalant thing. It, it's there, but it begins to bother you less and less. And then you feel like it's more and more inside until all of a sudden everything around you starts becoming destroyed. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And it's your choice to choose life or death. You must choose. Choose this day whom you will serve. Right? So look, let's go into the second part. All right? And Nathan said to El David, you pointed are that man. Thus says Yahuwah Elohai of Yasharel, I anointed you king over Yasharel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul, and I gave you the master's house of your master's woman into your bosom, and gave you the house of Yisrael and Yahuda. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto you such and such things, wherefore you have despised the commandment of Yahuwah to do evil in his sight. See that? To do evil in his sight, you have killed your uh, uh, Uriah the Hittite, 
with the sword and have taken the woman to be your woman and have slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me. Listen, he, listen, Yahweh said he despised him. I'm showing you now this spiritual marriage. This is, David was a king out of y'all's own heart, but it, he didn't say that he despised Uriah. He said that he despised Yah because he broke a commandment. And when we break a commandment, where we despise Yah. But when we catch ourselves, when we recognize, look what happened. When we recognize and we understand that, oh my goodness, I have sinned against Yah. The first thing that you should be willing and, and ready to do, because it's your reasonable service, is submit yourself and give yourself as a living sacrifice. Look what he said. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the woman of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your woman. Thus says Yahuwah, behold, I will raise up evil against you of your own house. Remember, his son Absalom came along to take over. the. So, so he prophesied that he would raise up evil unto him in his own house. And I will take your woman before your eyes and give them unto your neighbor. And he shall lie with your women. In the sight of his son, in, in the sight of his son. For you did it secretly, listen to that, but I will do this thing before all Yahshua'el and before the son. And I want to tell you, your sins will find you out. And guess what? He, You might do it secretly, but it's going to be, it's going to be revealed and shown openly. Openly. Meaning, all things that's hidden in darkness shall be revealed in the light. That's what Yah. Husha Mashiach said. Look what he said. Verse 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against Yahuwah. He recognized it. immediately. He recognized it. After David pointed, after Nathan pointed that little finger, it was you. David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against Yahuwah. And Nathan said unto El David, Yahuwah also have put away your sin. Now listen. He said he, he forgave him because he, he automatically he recognized that he had sinned against Yahuwah. <laughs> not not listen he recognized that oh my goodness I just I just I broke my my vow my vow to be the king that he called me to be the vow to be the, the husband that I was called to be I broke it to, to my Messiah to my Savior to one that that would it, when I make my my, my bed in hell, he will be there with me even. Right? So look what he said. He said, and David said in, uh, uh, in verse 14, How be it because this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of Yahuwah to blaspheme the child also that is born unto you shall surely die. Go back to James chapter 1 verses 13 through 15. <laughs> when your lust is enticed, then comes for sin. So sin, there go that what happened came for adultery. Now David was forgiven of his sin, but who had to pay the price? That baby had to pay the price. And so therefore, you had to be careful with your what well, were you supposed to be living according to the ruach? You supposed to be living according to the ruach and not the flesh, because if you live according to the flesh and not the ruach, right? That's where. We get in trouble and we are not, we're being enticed by our temptations, by our desires. Remember, don't say that you're tempted of Yah, because you're not. You're, you're tempted of your own desire, and then it conceives sin. So what's being what's being conceived in, in your spirit? Hmm? Is it sin or is it life? Is it sin or is it life? Because one or the other is going to come forth. And, and we have to recognize the types of fruit that we're bearing, right? We have to recognize the, the, the way that we are uh, living according to, to Yah's word. So so we have to recognize it. Now look, let's look at Galatians real quick. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 through 9. So look what it says right here. So it said, be not deceived. Yah Yah is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap, right? Whatsoever he sows, he shall also reap. For he that sows to his flesh, 
shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Ruach shall of the Ruach reap life everlasting. Why is that? Because the wages of sin is death. Look at Romans real quick. Look at Romans chapter 8. Look at Romans chapter 8 verses 6 through 17. Look what it said. For to be carnally minded is the death is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against Yah. And remember when when David recognized he sinned against Yah, he, he realized, oh my goodness, I, I was in the flesh. I was in the flesh. And so when we're in the flesh, we're in the carnal mind. So look what it said. He said, because the carnal mind is enmity against Yah, for it is it is not subject to the Torah of Yah, who will neither indeed can be. So remember what we were reading in, in chapter 7 here, where it said, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the Torah. Right? Saying that you know those commandments. So look what he's saying. Because the carnal mind is enemy against Yah, and for it is not subject to the Torah of Yah, who will neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yah. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach. If so be that the Ruach Yahuwah dwell in you. Look, look what he's saying right there. If it so be that the Ruach Yahuwah dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Ruach Mashiach, he is not his. And if Mashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin. The body, meaning your flesh, has died because of sin. But the Ruach is life because he Gave you life through being born again. But the Ruach is life because of what? Righteousness. Because of his righteousness. Because of his obedience of going unto the cross. But if the Ruach of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Mashiach from the dead shall also quicken, also quicken or raise your mortal bodies by the Ruach that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. Huh? Why are we debtors? Because he paid off our sin debt. So therefore, we still owe something. And when his blood was spilled, guess what? You were purchased or brought with a price. Brought with a price. So look what it said. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Because if you're living after the flesh, then you're living according to sin. And so therefore, your 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 debt is to sin. And so therefore, what did it say? Whatever you reap, whether it's of the flesh, then you're gonna reap of the flesh. But if it's of the spirit, then it'll be life everlasting. For if ye live, verse 13, after the flesh, ye shall die. You shall die. For as many, oh I'm sorry, for if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the ruach do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Ruach Yahuwah, they are the sons of Yahuwah. For ye have not received the Ruach of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the Ruach of life, the Ruach of Mat, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We cry, Abba, Father. So look at that. Look at that. And so when we're, David found himself in a carnal mind state. And a lot of times, some of us find ourselves in the carnal mind state. A couple weeks ago, I was in the carnal mind state. I was in the carnal mind state, and I had, to, when I recognized my sin, it look, it took him, to, it took y'all to send my, a message through my wife. And she used almost a metaphor and a dream, just like uh, uh, Dave did. And right then, and I had to say, I, I know what it is. I, I know what happened. So, so I want to tell you this, just because I'm an elder, just because uh, we we are apostles and evangelists and, and, and teachers and, and, and pastors, don't think that we don't have slips. Don't think that we don't we don't have areas that we need to adjust in. No, I'm not going to sit up there and say that I don't. And I can't speak for everybody, but I know when I find myself in trouble through temptation, in trouble through being enticed of my own love. I have to fall on my face. I have to seek repentance. And, and repentance is a daily thing. I, I don't know what we got to, well, just because we say, I gave my life that everything ends right there. No, 
because now we have to go to what Romans chapter 12 Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says look what it said uh, I'm trying Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 3 I think it is I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of Yah that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto Yahuwah which is your reasonable service your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of Yah. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as Yahuwah has dealt to every man the measure of belief. Look at that. Look at that. What y'all, y'all is telling us to do. We have to be careful. We have to be careful there. Because if we find ourselves in those occasions, remember, occasions or compromises, when we find ourselves in those situations or occasions and compromises, look at that word, com, what's, what's the rest of the word? Promise, meaning that you're interfering with a promise. Compromise. Put the rest of the word there in front of calm, promise or promise. You're interfering with a promise that you made. So don't compromise. Don't compromise. But pray. Seek y'all. Ask them to open your eyes. Have them, ask them to open your ears. And then you can birth forth the gift of eternal life. But we have to, we have to recognize within our walk. What, what we are doing. We have to take inventory within ourselves to understand what is going on with what we are doing. And not just uh, judge others, not just point fingers at others, not just sit up there and say, oh, this person did this, this person did that. Let's look at uh, Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whosoever you are that judge. For we're in Wherein you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you that judge do the same thing. But we are sure that the judgment of Yah is according to the truth against them which commit such things. And thank you, oh, thank you this, O oh man, that judge them which do such things and do the same, that you shall escape the judgment of Yah. He asked the question right there. Do you actually think that you're going to escape the judgment because you judge another person? Because you think that your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of Yah? No. No. Yah forbid. Look what he's saying. For or despise you the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of Yah Leads you to repentance. He asked another question. Do you not realize that the goodness of what he's doing, his long suffering, his forbearance leads you, it leads you to repentance. He's giving you a grace period. And remember, grace isn't something that you just uh flop around and throw around and say, Oh, well, I can go and do this. Uh, I got grace, so it's okay. I can smoke my weed. I got grace, I could sleep with women. He he gonna forgive me. No, he's high. Frustrate not the grace of God, the grace of Yah. Why not? Because grace is just like when a governor pardons a prisoner. Because remember, we were all prisoners at one time to hell because of Adam. But now, seeing that he has paid off our debt or pardoned us through grace, meaning that grace isn't something that you just Throw around all willy-nilly. It ain't a, ain't a get-out-of-hell-free card. <laughs> and people play with it. Talk about his grace is sufficient. They want to yell scripture and they use scripture. You have to be careful for that because people will use the word to try to trump what they are doing. So that is, a, remember it said that, that they will heat the teacher having in your ear. And remember, it said that seducing spirits will come forth in the last days. So we have to be careful. That's why we have to test the spirit by the spirit. Because people in their carnal mind state will still try to use the word. But remember, you understand the language of Yah. 
because you're a part of that kingdom. Huh? You understand what Yah represents. You understand his ways. You understand his economic system. And so therefore, you don't allow yourself to be drawn away because of, uh, 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 of some silly wind of doctrine. Right? Look what else he said. But we are uh, in verse three. And thank you, this old man. That, uh, I'm sorry. I already read that. Okay. Verse five. But after your hardness, an impenitent heart, treasure up unto yourself, wrath against the day of the wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Yah. Who will render to every man? Listen to this now. Who will render to every man? Y'all hear this? According to his deeds. According to, remember whether, whether you reaped in the flesh or whether you reaped in the spirit. According to your deeds. According to what you have done. Right? Look at that. Look at how, how we have to be careful. Because we, we as, as y'all's people, death has followed us for so long because we have become the tail instead of the head. Why is that? Because we chose to have that. We, we, we rather have the bill of divorcement than the marriage certificate. Huh? We rather have the, the, the bill of divorcement than the marriage certificate and, and, and be committed to be committed, not, not unfaithful, but committed to what Yah has commanded us to do. What Yah has commanded us to do. I want y'all to look at another one. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, right? Look at Second Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Verse 11. Knowing therefore the fear of Yahuwah, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto Yah, and I trust also are made manifest in our consciences. Huh? That spirit that y'all have given you will deal with your consciousness. And so therefore we have to, we have to prepare ourselves. Our minds have to be prepared. We have to stay sober. When you recognize that you're getting, uh, 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 it, it's like drifting on a piece of wood, right? It's like drifting on a piece of wood and you just out there. And then all of a sudden you see a boat coming but it's nothing that you could do if that boat passes you by. Why? And, and, and let's, let's use it like this. Because either you fell asleep from being too tired because you used all your strength. That's what sin does. It causes you to use all your strength. Or you reserved your energy on that board instead of kicking and paddling and trying to get wherever you're getting and had enough energy and enough uh, uh, enough uh, uh, sense to, to make something to reflect light or do whatever to get that ship's attention so that you can be saved. That's what y'all, Hushah Mashiach did for you. He saw you drifting out there on that driftwood and he came and saved you. Right? And not only that, he brought you back. <laughs> he brought you back to the promised land that was promised to you before. And now you begin to get a relationship. And as you get that relationship, and I don't know, that might not have been the best metaphor, but that's something that just came to me right then. We had to recognize that sometimes we drifting up, we, we drifting out there. But we ain't never alone. Because Mashiach said, he'll not leave us, deny us, no more forsake us. He will come get us. He said that one lamb that went astray, remember? That one lamb that went astray, he'll go back and lead, he'll lead the 99 and go get that one lamb. And that's what I love about our Messiah. That's what I love about him. Even when, when we waver, he doesn't. Huh? Even when, when we 
when we fall, he's still standing with his hand stretched out, ready to receive you. But you have to be huh, brought back to repentance. Test you by. You have to repent. Let's look at another one. Last one. Last scripture. Train coming into the station. And we gonna and then we're gonna uh we just gonna give praise unto our king because we this day are gonna choose life. I mean, so let's look. Romans chapter six. Romans chapter six, verse twenty through twenty-three. For when ye were servants, listen to that, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Y'all see that? It's connecting all the everything's connected. But when ye were free, well, when you were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Remember, you was ashamed of this. you used to wake up and like, oh my goodness, what did I do? And I remember I, I was an alcoholic. So people would, oh, here he come. And then I've been on at the food, and the next day I'm, I'm ashamed to show my face because I did all the different types of stuff. So, yeah, those fruits of unrighteousness will make you be ashamed. But look what it said. For the end of those things is death. <laughs> right back there. For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to Yahuwah, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yah is eternal life. Hallelujah. Through Hash, she, Yahusha, Hamashiach, and Adonai. Amen and Amen. We have to choose life or death, people. And when you find yourself being enticed to your own lust, and then sin begins to conceive, don't let it bring forth death. Go back unto repentance. And, and humble yourself before y'all. Humble yourself. He said, my people which are called by my name, listen to that, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their ways. It's process to all that. First, you must, you must humble yourself, pray, seek his face, and then you turn for your way. So many people, I can't do it because I'm still doing this. Well, he 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 wants you as a, a dirty rag so he can clean you up. You can't clean yourself up. You can't make yourself clean. Only the blood of Mashiach can do that. And that's why we have to be on guard with the snares that the enemy tries to drop before us. He'll use any little thing, any little thing to trigger your, your, your desire. Your temptation, because remember, it ain't it ain't even him. It's, it's he's he's allowed to throw the snare out there, but it's up to you whether you gonna walk into it or not. Hmm. So be careful, because our enemy, Satan, roams like a roaring lion, seeking. Here here comes the operative word there, whom he may devour may look at that word in there who he may devour that means that there's an option there and you have an option of life or death to choose this day whom you will serve whether it's going to be sin or whether it's going to be Yahuwah Elohim I mean everyone I, I just thank you for joining us here on, on this Sabbath day gathering it, it touched me personally with this message because we have to choose life and death and we have to re re remember when we're enticed of our own lust how it does concede death and pay attention to what went on with David these 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 actual events that happened and we see we were given those those messages so that we can look back and reflect on ourselves and sometimes we have to stop and reflect and make sure that we are doing what is right in his eyesight and not what's right in our own eyesight. I mean, so as the train comes into the station, I ask that everyone gives a praise offering to the Most High, Yahuwah, Eloheinu, I mean, Yahusha, Mashiach, through the Ruach HaKodesh, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, O miraculous King. Thank you. Baruch Hashem be unto your name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yahweh. We glorify your name. And I just want to say as that praise offering went off, I ask that y'all help share, get the message out there. Uh, and if you haven't joined or just join or subscribe or whatever, that's fine. But don't just be a spectator. And then I'm going to tell you like this. Go to my Apostles channel, uh, Remnant House. You will be fed. Uh, it, it, it's so awesome. That's, that's the house that I'm up under. And I'm telling you, he, he's an awesome teacher. So if you don't have a house, hey, come to the home of the strong and the brave. And we ain't talking about just spectating now. We're talking about being servants unto the king. Of the most high. I mean, so I love you, Yahoo will love you. Don't forget to say thank you, Yahusha. Love you. Talk to y'all soon. Stay home.